It's one of the most spine-tingling and violent science fiction films ever released. Yet when it came out in 1982, the film was practically blown away by yet another film featuring a cute and cuddly alien. Yet more than four decades later, take a guess as to which one of those two films now has a large fan cult following. Yes, we're talking about The Thing, and this is Sign 5. The Thing is a remake of the excellent Howard Hawke's 1951 classic The Thing from Another World, which in itself was based on the 1938 John W. Campbell novella Who Goes There? As a mark of respect to Hawke's production, The Thing's opening titles are directly inspired by its predecessor in a wonderful homage. Set at Outpost 31, a remote research base in Antarctica, winter has just commenced when an unexpected and somewhat unwelcome visitor arrives. Needless to say, with everyone confined within the claustrophobic environment of the base, where there is nowhere to run or hide, it doesn't take long for things, pun intended, to take a turn for the worst. It's interesting to note that both as a science fiction film and a horror film, the thing itself can't actually be defined as a character because it has no discernible shape, as opposed to the 1951 version, which was actually a guy in a suit. For this reason, calling it a thing is actually a very apt description. Central to the story are the Outpost 31 characters, led by Kurt Russell's helicopter pilot and resident loner, R.J. McCready. These people are placed in a difficult situation that they aren't prepared for, which is accentuated through their various personality clashes, along with their ever-increasing paranoia, fear and distrust of each other. It's also interesting to note that there are no female characters in the film at all, which is highly unusual for a mainstream Hollywood production, though this works for the story as it avoids any gender favouritism. In addition, because the characters are effectively everyday guys, we as the audience find it easy to relate to them whilst contemplating the question, what would we do in their situation? Complementing the film's ensemble character lineup is the fact that there are no antagonists, as it's the unseen alien itself which is effectively the bad guy. Consequently, as the film progresses, we begin to ask ourselves who exactly is going to survive the ordeal placed before them and how is it all going to end? Under the outstanding direction of John Carpenter and the haunting music from Ennio Morricone, the one aspect of the film which both fascinated and repulsed viewers were the mind-blowing practical visual effects of Rob Bowden. Ironically, it's actually his work on the film which has made it so famous and why it works on so many levels from a cinematic, suspenseful and a what's going to happen next point of view. So who should see the film? Well, make no mistake, the thing is a gruesome and bloody experience and is definitely not for kids. Yet it's worth noting all the horror is justified as the alien thing does what it can to survive, which in turn involves a high degree of gore. Yet it's this gore which gave the film its identity because we get to see creatures and alien designs we've never seen before, whilst intensifying the fear of the characters as they discover what being taken over by the alien actually involves. Now some people may be aware that there was a film released in 2011 also called The Thing. This film is not a remake of the 1982 version, instead it's a prequel. It's actually set at the Norwegian base which features heavily within the story. So if you want to know what happened to the fate of these Norwegian scientists, this is the film to check out. And if you're a Thing fan, it is well worth looking at. In addition to the 2011 film is the award-winning 2010 short story The Things, written by Peter Watts. Although not considered canon to the actual film, it nevertheless addresses the events of the movie from the point of view of the alien, which instead of trying to destroy humanity, as implied in the film, is in fact trying to save it. Despite being released way back in 1982, the thing is now considered a milestone in the horror genre and as a result has spawned many inferior imitations. Importantly though, it is not dated in the slightest. The intensity, drama, action, horror and level of unpredictability is still as impactful today as it was back then. Once upon a time the film was shredded by critics who were put off by the gruesome nature of the visuals and generally unhappy demeanour of the characters. However, those reviews are now long forgotten and standing in their place are the film's highly devoted fan base and everlasting longevity which only continues to grow. So if you haven't seen the film yet, then get yourself in front of a large television, turn up the audio, turn down the lights, crank up the AC to its lowest possible setting, then sit back, relax and be prepared to immerse yourself in a visceral experience you'll never forget.